George Trakis is an environmental sculptor widely acclaimed for projects around the world, and Western is home to one of his works. His installations are unique. They emphasize the natural resources of the local area, he recycles local materials, incorporating them into the finished piece, and he always strives to maintain a strong sense of community where he builds his amazing works of art. Some people think, you know, <clears throat> often I've built things in certain situations like this, and people say, when are you going to put the art on it? Because <laughs> of these platforms and everything else. And that happens a lot, both in a humorous way. Everyone knows I'm an artist and doing it, but some people joke around and they ask me about that. So the work pretty much is not necessarily contrary, but shows another kind of perspective on uh, contemporary art, not uh, for people to look at and focus on who the work itself as a shape or whatever, uh, but actually as a tool to look at their own environment. This was a very special situation when I came here and that Western allowed me to work with this extraordinary space, with this view, uh, to be part of this collection. Uh, was a real adventure for me in the early part of my career. So it was, uh, you know, it was one of those early works where I was given carte blanche to work with a huge space. It wasn't a huge budget, but I knew I could handle it. The deck is basically a deck for students to come out of the music building, sit and enjoy the view. I mean, that's the base common denominator of the work. However, details in the work relative to music, um, when I conceived of it and when I started building it, uh, the music had an influence on me. Um, the decks, as you can see, are very much like a keyboard. And there are four of them, so that there's a kind of treble clef and a bass clef. Yeah. The work allows the spectator to have an experience that's unusual relative to decks and walkways. And uh, it asks them to, the, the mind of the spectator says, do you think I can take this step across that gap? And uh, the body says, no problem. And people feel like gathering here. And the dialogue that happens here at the same time, the view that they can look at, gets them away from the mundane, from the daily stuff. And uh, that to me, in a sense, is what the function of art. People go to museums to look at new stuff, uh, to look at invention and, and, uh, and colors and uh, figures, be them nude or whatever. This is how this functions. It's instead of standing in front of it or walking around it, you actually get on it and uh, feel your body on it. Uh, there were issues of security, balance. It, it kind of respects the intelligence of the viewer and that there are no railings in the front here. When you sit there coming up the walkway, there are no railings that set down at the base. So it kind of says, this is not a normal walkway here. This is not a normal deck. It's not just a, a bench you know, on a concrete footing. And so it kind of sensitizes and, and, uh, and puts the viewer kind of in touch with themselves and the materials of the work that they're on and the environment. And it's that kind of binary thing back and forth. So it, it very much is a kind of choreographic experience where the work kind of asks you uh, to be careful, but also have a little bit of an adventure. There's a lot of thinking that goes into my creation when I'm doing it that may not necessarily be understood or even felt when it's there, literally. That's what I love doing, you know. Access to inaccessible areas. So it really becomes an adventure, you know. People said, well, I've known that space for all my life and never been there. Now I can go there. You know, the main impulse is to take full advantage of a space that I can acquire uh, get permission to build on, and do something for its local population. Not for the art world, not for the critics in Seattle or in some big city. I really work for the community where I'm building. But no, I can't, you know, there's no, an artist doesn't retire who's healthy and wants to keep doing so. So, yeah, I'll be, keep doing it, they keep saying, I'll be playing in the end of the, you know, the edge of the coffin right by the time I go. I was hearing voices in my head telling me I had to die, telling me I was a burden to everyone around me, telling me that I was useless, worthless and less than, that I had no purpose. 
None of that was true. My brain was trying to kill me. I was trying to stay alive. And that's, if you can imagine a, a pain 